Why are you leaving Dr. Hazel? Did you fall for him? Can't handle it, or was it the other way around? Look, I know you like to play games with people. Said I grew up with four brothers. Keep your hands to yourself. I'm okay with anything that comes out of your mouth. Oh, did House just meet his match? Surely he can't say no to this one. He did the banter check and she reacted faster than an iced nipple. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 1, Episode 19, Kids. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 episodes of House. This will be Episode 45. Let's see if I can get a diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. You look a little pet. I'm fine. We need an ambulance! She was expecting an applause, but was outshone by Mr. Blood Dispenser over there. The disrespect. Now, what could cause this bleeding from our patient's ear, also known as oteragia? Could be an ear infection, especially with reference to water. Swimmer's ear is actually due to infection and a ruptured eardrum could cause the bleeding as a result of infection as well. Could also be a skull fracture or something stuck in the ear, like a bead or a pencil. You don't think it could happen, but it happens. Maybe he hasn't been watching my videos and he's using Q-tips in his ears too aggressively and injured his ear canal or could even be a tumor. Let's get more clues. Vogler is dead. Vogler, the idea. Things can go back to the way they were. I want you to come back. Why do you want me back? Because you're a good doctor. That's not enough. Not for me. House, there are Antarctic explorers that figured out you liked Cameron even before you did. Maybe House has alexithymia. It's a condition that 10% of the population have that causes them to have difficulty identifying and describing emotions. Sounds pretty House-esque. So instead of saying, I like you, Cameron, he says, my favorite monster truck is Gravedigger. Wouldn't make much of a story though if they just got married, had a kid, and lived happily ever after though, would it? We love the chaos. A judge at the campus pool center collapsed. LP revealed a virulent form of bacterial meningitis. No one leaves the quarantine area without a blue slip. Take these. From all the house episodes I've seen, I've realized that the only thing Cameron loves more than saying no to house is quarantining the hospital. Meningococcal meningitis can be infectious, but the main risks are to close household contacts who have 1,200 times the risk of developing the disease compared to the background population in the few days after exposure. Short exposures like we saw here may have a slightly increased risk, but only significant if the patient is vulnerable. You see, most of us have had the bacteria Neisseria meningitidis that causes meningitis on our skin before, and one in 10 of you watching right now have it in your nose or throat at this point. Don't rush for the domestos though, as only one in 40,000 people actually develop the disease. So what makes those people susceptible? A 2010 study by Imperial College London answered that exact question by finding patients with the condition and comparing their DNA to those people who didn't have it. They noticed that those who developed meningitis had mutations in some genes that code for immune functions against bacteria which were lacking, making those people susceptible. It's also thought that there are some environmental factors like we know that after people have gotten the flu and their immune system is distracted, then they're more likely to get meningitis afterwards. Still doesn't cause bleeding from the ears, but maybe it made him unconscious and it was his head hitting the floor that caused the bleeding. Has been given pills here just after walking in, definitely wouldn't happen in real life. But if it did, it'd either be rifampicin or ciprofloxacin, depending on local resistance. You have a rash? It's from my new bathing suit. I've had it a week. She's had the rash a week. If it was this meningitis, she'd be dead by now. But her neck only hurts moving side to side. Get a lumbar puncture and put her on with Fampin. Okay, so House wants to treat her for the condition that he just convinced Cuddy she didn't have so he could get her off the emergency room floor. Brilliant. To be fair, a good doctor always covers for the inevitable eventuality that they're wrong because ultimately we're always working on probabilities. Yes, 98.8% of times this cough will be a viral infection, but a very small proportion may be lung cancer. What then? How have I covered for that eventuality? Maybe dealing with Vogler has given House a healthy dose of cautiousness, not necessarily a bad thing, especially when it means he just asked Chase to research 
all the causes of neck pain, starting with the letter A. What if Ass of a Boss is there on the list? One thing that isn't quite accurate here though is House mentioned meningitis causes neck pain. That isn't exactly accurate. It's more neck stiffness and one test for nuchal rigidity or stiff meninges is putting the head down vertically to try to touch the chin to the chest and feeling if there's any resistance. If there is, then that could be a sign of rigidity amongst the hundred other things as it isn't very specific. Now, what could this rash be in our 12 year old girl with neck pain and fever? It looks like a particular rash which has some small red dots inside which are little broken capillaries under the skin. If I'm right, then if you push a glass against it, then it wouldn't go away, i.e. non-blanching. There are a limited number of things that can cause that, like vasculitis, amyloidosis, scurvy, meningitis, endocarditis, and clotting disorders. Very interesting signs so far. I can tell this is already gonna be a good episode. Thanks. No meningitis and no other infection. That's blood. The lavage showed blood in your GI tract. The lavage? The lavage? Did they just pump her stomach because she had bleeding gums? That's like going to the doctor with a cough and getting a rectal exam. But that does mean we have a new symptom, GI bleeding. Now with neck pain and a particular rash, that makes vasculitis way more likely, like Wagner's or Chirg Strauss. Alternatively, it could be blood disorders like thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura or cancers like leukemia or lymphoma. I'm surprised they didn't do a CT of the head before doing the lumbar puncture to make sure it was safe to do as you want to make sure the pressures aren't high to avoid brain herniation. Now I'm wondering how the diving thing could play into this as well. Maybe performance enhancing drugs could have triggered it. Let's find out more. Oh yeah, that's your money shot. That? A dealer for it? Neck pain could be a symptom for bone cancer. House is trying to get his own back from Chase from working with Vogler by simply abusing him, making him look up all the causes of neck pain, letting Foreman use his break to do the biopsy as well. Also, because the hospital is in what seems like an outbreak, there are absolutely no procedure rooms. So Foreman had to get creative and use the autopsy table, so welcoming for a 12 year old girl. The team also did a capsule endoscopy and found a vascular lesion called a doulafoy, which they haven't figured out the significance of just yet, but that definitely matches my vasculitis theory. It's basically a single abnormally enlarged blood vessel below the GI mucosa that pulsates and thins the overlying mucosa, leading it to become exposed, then bleed. The cause isn't that well understood, but it's thought that abnormality in the blood vessel structures or chronic inflammation can cause it. Treatment is usually with endoscopy and either a clip or heat or injection to stop it from bleeding. The team think that this could all be part of a bone cancer, which Foreman is doing a bone marrow biopsy for. This makes about as much sense as a suitless astronaut. I think they meant to say blood rather than bone cancer, which a bone marrow biopsy is a great test for and would likely fit her symptoms. Lymphoma or leukemia would be a very spicy diagnosis now and very much treatable. You could also do a blood film looking at the blood under a microscope for abnormal cells before sticking a gigantic needle in her. But where'd the fun in that be? We're, uh, we're pretty sure it's not cancer. She's having an absence seizure. Mary, you okay? Push two milligrams, out of advance, that. A bleed in the brain could cause seizures. Rat poison could also cause the neck pain. We've got a new symptom, absence seizures. Apparently the CT scanners in the hospital are too full to get a scan though, so Chase suggested scanning with an ultrasound. He also made a very spicy suggestion of rat poison that could have affected her, although the most common rat poison is actually a blood thinner of the Coumarin class, so she would just bleed and that would be obvious, so I don't think it'd be that. 
Stritine is another rat poison which could cause the next pain through spasm, although timelines don't quite fit and her muscles would be much tighter. It usually causes progressive spasm 20 minutes after ingestion and goes on to cause seizures through cerebral edema. Maybe though, when they pumped the stomach, they got rid of some of the rest of the poison, meaning they accidentally saved her life by doing the wrong investigation. Chase is making himself pretty tough to sack at this point with his good suggestions. Cuddy's also trying to get a house to interview for Cameron's replacement, but he clearly doesn't want to replace her. So he rejected the guy because of a tattoo. House hates rebels. Why are you leaving Dr. Hazel? You fall for him, can't handle it, or was it the other way around? Look, I know you like to play games with people. I said I grew up with four brothers. Keep your hands to yourself. I'm okay with anything that comes out of your mouth. Oh, did House just meet his match? Surely he can't say no to this one. He did the banter check and she reacted faster than an iced nipple. I remember once when I was doing my interview for an academic foundation program, they asked me, tell me a time you got involved in teaching. He was expecting me to talk about arranging a lecture or teaching more junior medical students. And when I mentioned I was publishing online videos, he was beyond confused. The first question he thought to ask was, how do you get feedback on your teaching? So I just said the comment section and he said, but isn't that just filled with people telling you to go die in a fire? Funny thing, he was right. But usually after that, they would say something constructive, which helped me make videos people actually want to watch, which is crazy, so thank you for watching. Now, if you don't want me to die in a fire and want some exclusive perks, then check out the channel membership. You get priority reply to comments, early access to new videos, and being able to suggest a series and episode for me to react to are some of the benefits. For a limited time only, the first 30 members have a chance to win a one hour, one on one medical tutor session with me on a topic of your choice. We currently have 18 members with only 12 spots left. So make sure to join now to secure your space. Also, the earlier you join, the earlier I can react to your suggestion. So press join now. Only an incredibly shallow, insecure woman would rather be in pain all day long than wear a decent looking, comfortable shoe. You're right, there's a significant bleed in her temporal lobe. But no poisons. I need an operating room and a neurosurgeon. This is getting very spicy. So there's a bleed in her brain, no toxins. I still think vasculitis and thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura will be on top of my list and explains everything, the rash, the GI abnormality, the brain bleed. If you know what TTP is, then it's a very interesting condition that causes both clots and bleeds at the same time. Clots form in the small blood vessels in the body, limiting their blood flow and consuming your clotting factors. That leads you to deplete your platelets and be vulnerable to bleeds paradoxically. Treatment would be with plasma exchange to remove antibodies that cause the condition. I definitely want to see her autoimmune screen and platelet count here, but first it sounds like that brain scan needs to be stopped. The operation went well. We're missing something. That's a lot of balloons. What if the rash isn't a rash? Who gave her the balloons? Some of the girls from her team? No way, I have a theory. The balloons are her team overcompensating for getting her injured. The rash isn't a rash because it's a bruise and right at the start, her coach said that she had neck pain a few days before. That must have been when she was injured. Maybe they snuck into the pool for some secret diving after hours and the water was too shallow. She hit the bottom of the pool and injured herself. Subdural hemorrhage slowly bleeds out over time. And it's only that the pressure's risen so much that it's led to her having these absent seizures. It actually fits. Blood tests and other tests they've done would also be negative, would also fit the episode title of kids, but if she had TTP or vasculitis as well, that could make her injuries worse, so let's find out. Rash wasn't a rash. She's bleeding into her skin. It's papar. Thrombotic thrombocytopenia papar. What could have set it off? She's obviously not menopausal, so no estrogen. There is one other possible cause. Yes! I got that one pretty early. I will take that. The cause though, what could trigger it? There are two types of TTP, you've got congenital and acquired. In the congenital type, it generally presents in newborns or really young children, and she is a champion level athlete, so clearly she's been healthy up until this point. So it's more likely to be the acquired type, 
although that usually presents in adults, it can affect children. Triggers could be cancer, which we've ruled out, HIV, lupus, don't tell me it's lupus. Infections, obesity and pregnancy. House was saying before, why haven't any of the boys from her team visited? Maybe it's because she actually slept with one of them and is pregnant. It would explain the trigger, the balloons and the story, especially since they seem to have engineered this whole busy hospital scenario to stop her getting CT scans in case she was pregnant. Oh, that would fit so well. Also, episode title, kids. Come on, it's it's gotta be that, it's gotta be that. Question for you smart people. What is the youngest recorded that a girl has started her periods? Answers down below. Pregnancy causes all kinds of chemical and biological changes in a woman's body. We're gonna have to do something called plasmapheresis. We're also gonna have to terminate the pregnancy. Anyone under 16 having sex in the UK is illegal even if both people are under 16, that's because they aren't seen as being able to consent to sexual acts in the eyes of the law. House saying he will have to terminate the pregnancy regardless of what she wants isn't quite right though. Of course, having a child while the girl is a child herself will have potentially poor outcomes and she would likely need a C-section to allow the child to be born, but Plasmapheresis is safe in pregnancy and the youngest recorded girl to carry a child successfully until birth was just five years old. Madness. Very interesting episode. Seven out of 10 entertainment, seven out of 10 accuracy, eight out of 10 diagnosis. Very cool. Your platelet counts up. How's your neck? You'll come back to work if I go out on a date with you, okay? Yes! House has finally stopped torturing those poor doctors with fake interviews. This must start a very interesting arc between him and Cameron. Can't wait to see that. With the patient, House didn't tell her parents because in the eyes of the law, even though she can't consent to sex, she has capacity to consent to an operation and contraception due to Gillick competence. That says that if a girl is 12 to 15, then she can consent if she can understand, weigh up, retain, and convey the information. It was named after the Gillick family who lost a case against their own daughter for her seeking contraception for medical services. Pretty brutal. Now, if you thought this episode was good, then watch the previous one where House ends the war with Vogler right here. I'm Sarah Med. stay curious.